Welcome, Coker Athletic fans, to another exciting episode of the Cobra Corner. My name is Will Habel, and I will be your host today. I am alongside JT Colapicho and David Mack. We've got a great show for you guys today as we sit down with Coach Fico of Coker Baseball, Coach Ambrose of Men's Lacrosse, and junior midfielder Zaire Marshall for Men's Lacrosse. Sit back as we unpack the latest and greatest updates from Coker University Athletics. Let's dive right into the weekly roundup, highlighting key results and performances across Coker this past week. First off, we have men's lacrosse, who's on a roll right now with three straight sack wins. This past Wednesday, we took on Kutaba, and the first win of the week with Coker winning in an 11-10 thriller. Down 8-3 at the half, Coker comes out swinging in the third quarter, bringing out five straight goals, and Marshall finds Behe for the eventual game winner from a rip from the outside arc and then justin behe on the day tally four goals and an assist while marshall had an impressive seven points on the day with three goals and four assists while hoford stand tall in the cage with 15 saves in the contest while michael jensen is continuing what he's been doing all year with eight cause turnovers and Connolly just behind him with four as the as the two of them still hold the one and two spots nationally for cause turnovers then this saturday the Cobras took a trek up the mountains to face up face Mars Hill with the Cobras getting the best of the Lions 11-9. Holding off the Lions late run in the fourth quarter with Marshall tallying two goals and an assist. Ryan Forehand two goals as well and then Utz with one goal and five assists on the day. Now moving to the Diamond with baseball. Yeah, baseball. Hall was able to go ahead and upset once again number 19 Mount Olive in another huge thriller for the team in what was a 10-7 victory for the Cobras. Because, again, one for three on the day. A for uh, Ixarino, who had four RBIs on the day. Ian Miller hit a home run. Then Coker was able to go ahead and beat uh, Virginia Weiss 5-3. He has, again, Virginia Weiss was able to take over and... Take advantage of what it was for, or again, big game series for them. This is a 5-3 victory for them in game three of that series. Again, Ix Serino driving in two for the Cobras, along with uh, Santiago as well, who making his return from injury not too long ago. Oh, and then moving over to the track. Heck, 4x4. Her for Coker was able to take top five, as well as seeing more uh, high performances by Yazir. Or in the 100, Jeffrey. He stills in the uh, 100. Both of them getting top five finishes. Is along with, uh, again, Yazir just getting top five finishes all weekend. And, and again, and Donovan Jones picking up a top 10 finish in both the 200. It, and Austin Bates, in terms of distance, uh, was able to go ahead and take, for, take fourth overall in the open mile. Also, oh, that pretty much ends it up for the uh, track. And then headed back inside, David, with uh, Acro. Yeah, so Acro this weekend competed um, at Limestone in a tri-meet that included um, them, Limestone, and Mars Hill. Um, Coker currently the number 12 team in the country. Limestone the number 7 team in the country. Um, Coker took care of business. Uh, they they got a 254.39 as a score which was almost or around 25 points higher than Mars Hill. And they were right there in the same realm as, as number seven limestone, about seven points away with limestone scoring a 261.97. Uh, so right in the realm and we're competing at a very high level. And we look forward to seeing the rest of the season for macro um, out onto the tennis courts this week. I mean, the, the performances that we saw individually and as a team for both the men and the women is just phenomenal this week. Uh, the men took a surprise win um, away from Anderson on Wednesday, 5-2, uh, to two, and the women unfortunately fell on that one, 4-3. Uh, to three. And then a flip-flop happened where the, the women took a 4-3 victory on Saturday against Tusculum while the men fell 4-3. to three. 
Um, some some pretty great performances are from the men's side. We had Tom Lammers, who went 4-0 and in a combination between the matches, playing both singles and doubles. He played at first doubles and at second singles. And then a great performance by Emerson Banning from the, the women's team. Uh, she also went 4-0, uh, competing at first doubles and at third singles in the two matches. And she provided a huge spark for the Cobras women's tennis team on Saturday where um, she actually was the clinching point that won the match. And she was it, the, the being there and watching this in person was insane. And the, the way that her team rallied around her, but she lost the first set uh, six, three, and then was down in the second set five to one. So all her opponent needed to do was win one more game and, and Tusculum would have won the match. Um, but Emerson just just buckled up the straps and, and, and you know, cracked her knuckles and went to work and won six games in a row, being down one to five, and won that second set seven five, and then won the third set six four, which is what clinched the match for the Cobra. So great week for her going four and oh, and then also battling back to to take the winning point for them. So that wraps up the week for the Cobras. All right. In this week's Coach's Corner segment, we have a special guest today, Coach Vigo Kanla from the baseball team. Coach, glad to have you. Glad to be here. Thank you guys for having me on. So I guess just first of all, tell us a little bit um, about your your background, how how you got to Coker and, and kind of the basis of what you've done here so far. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. Um at the time, the assistant coach here was from Miami as well. So he did a lot of recruiting in the South Florida area. And um, he saw me at a showcase event. Um, I'm not going to lie, I was undersized. You know what I mean? Um, smaller kid with a chip on my shoulder, had something to prove. And not too many schools in Florida were on me, you know? So a, a couple schools up here in the Carolinas um, were on me. I made a couple visits, and I fell in love with the school. I fell in love with the coach. And... Um, made one of the biggest decisions of my life was to come up here in the middle of nowhere of Hartsville, South Carolina, you know, <laughs> yeah. Miami city boy. And, um, I loved it, you know, and, uh, Coker gave me a chance to earn my degree, but also continue to, to play the game that I love. And, um, graduated from here, got my, uh, undergraduate, my master's, um, coached a little bit of high school ball, um, went back down to Florida, coached a little high school ball down there. And then, um, Came back up to the Carolinas, coached at Newberry for four or five years, and then made a decision to come here and be the head ball coach here. You know what I mean? And it sounds kind of cheesy because it is a little bit, but ever since graduating from this place, it's, this is my dream job to come back and be here. You know, and um, I'm excited to be here. We got a good group, and I'm excited to see what we got for the rest of the season. Yeah, that's that the the, the story and the progression from from not only being here but also having success here as as a player with the teams that you had and and then moving from that into the coaching realm and, and getting to coach your alma mater I, i'm sure that has to be special so um how do you with your love for coker how do you work to instill that love um into your players like you have yeah absolutely it's i mean it's an everyday grind it's an everyday battle you know what I mean? And and it's it's understanding the culture and the history of this place and, and what makes Coker what it is, you know, and especially the baseball program here. Because you got to think about it. There was one coach that started this program and was here for 30 years. You know what I yeah. mean? And he, he, he coached a, a lot of great players. There's a lot of baseball support and alumni here. And, and it was hard. You know what I mean? He, he, he was hard on us. You know, he pushed mm -hmm. us, but, but he was using the game of baseball you know, as a tool to teach us what life's about, you know, and that and that and that's my biggest thing, you know. All these kids want to get drafted. They want to play professional baseball, right? I mean, that, that's their goal, you know, but the odds aren't in their favor to do that, you know. So my goal is to make sure they're ready for life when they leave this place, you know, and, and, and that they understand that they got to wake up and, and chew the nail every day and get after it and just attack the day and win the day. Yeah, that, that's awesome. So I, I guess from uh, looking at, last season and then moving into this season um, 19 wins on the season last year and then already 16 this year so how have you used your philosophy and stuff to, to start that turnaround from where you got here yeah i mean 
we came in and, and, and the biggest thing me and my staff had to do last year was change the culture of this place. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, we had too many guys that, that baseball wasn't a priority or, or didn't really understand what college baseball was about, you know, mm -hmm. and we brought in a different style of philosophy and, and gameplay. And, and so me and my assistants as well last year, and obviously every year, I mean, it's all about recruiting, you know what I mean? So we had to bring in the type of kids that fit what we do. So last year we brought in about 29, 30 players um, wow. that mixed way. And, and that was the biggest thing this fall was to make sure that the guys returning from last year mixed with the guys that came in this year. Because it was basically two new teams, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. that had to come together with one goal and one same mindset. And, and early in the fall we went through our bumps and, and bruises, you know what I mean? But that's the thing with, with the culture that we preach here is that, man, you got 50 guys that are – going through it just with you. You know what I mean? And you, mm -hmm. you got those brothers to rely on. When things get tough, when you're homesick, you know you got four or five guys that, that, that are going through the same thing you are. You know, so you can always relate with someone. We're big with team culture, team chemistry, and guys loving for each other and, and, and wanting to fight for each other. Yeah, so I, I, I asked the, the same question to um, Coach Michael Lamberti from, from men's basketball. Uh, I know that, that taking over a, a program – as, as a new head coach can be daunting, especially when you inherit so many players. Like, like you said, you know, you have to implement a new system. You have, I mean, these are, these are kids that, that are, I mean, you can get them to buy into what you're doing, but you know, that's not what they were brought in for. They were brought in with a different coach and a different philosophy and things like that. So what are some things that, that you can do as a, as a head coach and also like maybe some activities or, or whatever it may be to, to kind of try and get them to, to buy into that philosophy. That's one thing about this group is that we came into a special group that bought in right away. You know what I mean? There, was, there wasn't there was any fight back, you know? And, and yeah, the, there were a couple of kids, but they weeded themselves out and ended up quitting. You know what I mean? But, but, but as a group, my staff and I were blessed to have a good group that, that, that we're all in, you know, we, we have a group that wanted to be coached. They wanted to be pushed hard. You know I mean? They wanted to be challenged. They wanted to be held to high standards and expectations, you know? So for, for us as coaches coming in, we were kind of blessed, you know, and, and, and we had a good group, but they just needed a, a guy to push them, a, a, a leader and, 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 and three leaders as coaches to, to come in and push them and hold them to high standards and expectations. Absolutely, and obviously going back to the um, topic of some of the freshmen and everything like that, uh, with uh, what's called some of the class coming in, obviously Blackwell being one of the main focuses and everything like that has been arguably one of the good arms coming out of the bullpen for you guys and for the entire staff. What has it been like kind of just getting both of Blackwell as well as, again, this whole rotation of freshman class that's just come in and just revitalized almost like a new energy in a sense. Absolutely. That's a great question. And, 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 and that's one thing is that our program, we're kind of based off the high school kid. You know what I mean? We, we like to get those four year kids in here. We like to develop them for four years. And yeah, we have a couple of junior transfers mixed in there. Of course, every team's going to have that, but, but we like to play freshmen. You know what I mean? The, 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 the only way to learn is through experience, you know what I mean? And, and, and too many programs get these young kids in here and they, they just kind of rot on the bench for a couple for a couple of years and not developing it better, you know? And in order, and what we believe in, what we do here, in order to get better, you got to play. You got to play, you know what I mean? You got to play the game. You got to go through experiences. You got to learn through the game. But yeah, Blackwell has been good for us. You know, I mean, he goes in there, fills it up and competes. You know, does he have the best stuff in the world? No, you know what I mean? But in his head, he does. And that's one of the biggest things as a pitcher is that you got to have that mindset that you're better than whoever's in that box and you're going to step in and you're going to compete with them. And the thing is, is with a lot of these freshmen as well as the pitching rotation, it's something that you rarely see from a lot of uh, pitchers and everything like that. It's one of those things, whether the score is, you know, we're up by 20 or it's a one-run game coming into the top of the night, then we need to hold everybody. And we bring somebody in to hold that lead and everything like that, or to hold it to one yeah. on run. And it's like, like one of those things where they come in with the same confidence and the, the same mindset. So I would assume from a coach's aspect and everything like that, with them having that mindset of coming in and just being ready and good to go is almost, uh, almost a breath of fresh air to see and everything like that. Cause it's like, here comes a guy who's gonna, who has the mindset of, 
I'm ready. I'm good to go no matter what the situation is, and I'm going to treat it as if it's a tie game heading into the top of the ninth. Yeah, no, absolutely. But all that, I mean, you guys see that those three or four hours every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but but it starts with the preparation. You know what I mean? And I'm blessed to have one of the best pitching coaches in the country and Kyle Gallman that, that he puts in the work with him. You know what I mean? He, he practices game reps, uh, just, just everything in order to put them in a mindset that, that when we practice, it's like a game. You know what I mean? So, so when they get in the game, they can just trust the work they put in. So that's where I think that confidence comes from is that, that, that they practice with that confidence. They, they practice pressure, hard situation where coaches on them, coaches on top of them. You know, and, and, and again, we have a good group that doesn't fight back. They want it. They, they want to be pushed hard. They can handle being pushed hard. They can handle being coached hard. And that's one thing that I'm lucky to say that, that we have a good group. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry. I, I mean, I play lacrosse, and I'm out there on the practice field, and then I look over. You guys are long gone, and your pitching coach go out there with uh, all the pitchers on the mound. They're just going to work. I mean, we'll be out. We'll be done with practice. They'll still be out there. So it's really cool to see, like, your co the coaching group you have really does care about the players. And me as a player myself, it really – I mean, you guys buy in, makes us play better. What a play at a higher level. No, I appreciate that. And, yeah, I mean, and again, I, I have two, two of the hardest working assistants. You know what I mean? People want to give me the credit because I'm the head guy, man. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, without those two, we, we wouldn't be where we're at right now. Absolutely. And, obviously, for preparation and everything like that, it comes down to um, playing in the sack and everything like that. And sometimes some of the – easiest or one of the best preparations you can have is a tough non-conference schedule and for you guys i mean you get that with obviously facing the number five team in the nation in unc pembroke facing the number two team in the nation in uh, north greenville coming up up and obviously beating a team who was in the elite eight in belmont abbey last year as well as mount olive what is it like you know going up against those teams and then obviously we'll talk about the results in the end yeah. and but like what is it like going up against a pretty solid non-conference schedule me personally i love it and 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 our guys embrace the challenge you know what i mean and and we set goals and and, and to attain the, those goals we got to go through good teams you know what i mean i mean the, the past three or four years it's gone through north greenville you know and and we got to go we're gonna go over there we're gonna go play them you know and and it, it's good for them to to be in these environments and and, and play these teams and and see where we match up you know and again if, I could be easily just like like uh, a lot of these schools. A lot of these schools in the southeast go out and then they they have a little weaker schedule midweeks. But I don't think it, it, it's doing you a, it's it's doing you a disservice a little bit. You know what I mean? That if if we're going out there and we're beating a midweek team twenty to two, you know, I I rather go against a, a a stronger opponent and maybe lose by one or two runs. But you know, I, at least our guys are going through that experience. Builds builds character if anything. No doubt. I mean, yeah. You get. I mean, you, you go play with one of the better teams in the country, and you come out like let's see, you, you may lose, but like one, two runs. I mean, you're like we can we can hang with these guys. Like people talk down on us all the time. Like I mean, we can you just prove it to yourself. You can go out. I mean, you're this no better than the next guy up or the next team up. Like no, for sure, anybody's game for sure. And that's one thing with this group that we have is that they don't fear anybody. We, we walk into every game expecting to win. You know, I don't I don't care who we play, the Yankees, the Marlins. It, it doesn't matter that. Well, I mean, on paper, yeah. I mean, we may, we might not be the sexiest team on paper. You know what I mean? We might not be the biggest, the strongest. You know what I mean? But good thing we don't play this game on paper. You know, we, we, we got to step between the lines and match up and, and see what happens. And I'll take my squad over any squad in the country. I'm telling you, as, as long as we do the things that we need to do and worry about ourselves, I will take my small, unathletic team <laughs> over any team in the country. I'm being serious. <laughs> yeah, no, for, for sure. And it, it's it's really nice to see, um, you know, a lot of teams and a lot of, like, individuals in general a laud over the, the power-hitting baseball, you know, home run hitting and scoring lots of runs and, and stuff like that. Um, but then, you know, you guys, you, you get people on base, you know, w whether it be, um, I think it was what, Ixarino is top 10 of the country and hit by pitches, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you draw walks, you, you, you get people on base and then, you know, you go to work, it's bunting and stealing and, and base hits and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's, um, kind of refreshing, uh, for, I, I, I grew up 
you know, playing, watching baseball and stuff like that. I did my um, internship in college with the Akron Rubber Ducks, which is the double A affiliate of the Guardians. Um, so wa- being able to watch that and, and, and watch, you know, fundamental baseball that, you, you know, no matter who you are, uh, you guys are hard to play against. Not a single team wants to play Coker, especially at home. I mean, at 11 and three home record yeah. at Tom J new field, mm-hmm. it's, it's tough to come in here and play Coker baseball. No doubt. We kind of play to our field a little bit. It's a pitcher's park, you know, what I mean? and don't get me wrong. I like the long ball, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but. I call it putting pressure, you know, just playing the game, playing offense. And and again, when it comes down to it, 18, 22 year olds can't handle pressure too much, you know. So mm-hmm. so it, it it our style of offense, I enjoy it because you never know what's going to happen, you know. And you got to be on your toes defensively. You better be on your p's and q's and and ready for what we got going on. Mm-hmm. And in a sense, it's a little bit of a faster pace, if you will, for um what's called for how you guys play and everything like that and again a lot of teams they'll turn around and they'll play about like you know they'll play nine innings of baseball and everything like that trying to out slug each other but for you guys and everything like that when people come in and everything like that it's essentially you pretty much you know we're gonna play fast-paced baseball or for which is ironic to say with small ball and everything like that so i mean i assume changing the uh the culture for you guys and just kind of changing the pace for everybody. I mean, it's almost an advantage for you guys going into it mentally because going into it, you're pretty much saying they don't know what they're going to be expecting. And it, again, it, we've seen it. It throws a lot of teams off. No, I'm with you. And, and, and we base this program on pitching and defense. We got to be able to pitch and play defense. And that's one thing that our pitchers do a really good job with is that they pitch with tempo. You know what I mean? Give me the ball and let's go, you know, give me the ball. Let's get a pitch going. Let's go. And, and I think your defense plays better when, when you're pitching with tempo. You know what I mean? They're on their toes. They're talking. They're communicating. But, I mean, it, it all goes down to the preparation of what we do every day. I mean, you bring up the hit-by-pitches. I mean, we work on getting hit-by-pitches with tennis balls now. I mean, we throw, <laughs> we, we throw tennis balls at it. But we work on that stuff. You talk about base, I think we, we, we're one top two, top three in the country with, with stolen bags this year so far. And we work on it every day, you know, and it. Defense, we work on it. We work, I mean, the little things. I mean, we, we got to pay attention to the little things, the details of the game, because as you guys can see, you guys have been here for, for this year. I mean, we played a lot of close one-run games, one-run, yeah. two-run games, where, where every extra free bag we give up is important, or every bag that we take is important, you know? Mm-hmm. So we preach the little things and being detail-oriented and, and, and thinking the plays before they happen. You know what I mean? You got a pre-pitch plan, you know, and, and, and that solves a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So we've talked a lot about uh, the su- the success on the field and how, how you guys have got to that point, but I kind of want to shift a little bit. You talked about preparing your guys for life after baseball, life after college, you know, what, what happens then. So I, I guess, um, you know, with being the this fall the the number one team in division two for community service hours uh so i i my my question would be what's some of the favorite things you guys have have done as a team um to get out of the community experience that yeah one of the biggest things we do is um the dylan adams home run derby he was um uh a young boy from hartsville some town of hartsville who passed away from cancer that um they do a home run a home run derby for them every fall. We go out there, our guys throw BP, our guys go shag, pop flies, you know, and it gives them an opportunity to to mingle with the community, to to to, to talk to the, the 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 younger community, you know, that that kind of look up to them, you know, and it's important that, yeah, and, and our athletic department does a great job, you know, I mean, the, the, there's a lot of other programs that do a better job than we do. We need to step our game up a little bit, which I like, you know what I mean? That They're keeping us on our toes and we need to do more with the community, you know, but but just just going out there and, and, and bringing the town of Hartsville and Coker together, you know, that that's our biggest goal is, is, is to bring the community and this university together and just be one, you know. And I, I, I've heard a lot of the coaches say how, you know, people that they've met through these community service experiences you know, they see them at games throughout the season. So you're, you're, you're bringing the community in, you're getting them to buy in like, oh, I really like that they did this for us. You know, I'm going to go support them the way that they supported us. A- absolutely. Or, 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 or go watch a player that they just met, you know what I mean? And go support. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's huge. And and we need to do a better job. I'm not going to lie. I think we need to do a better job. A baseball program needs to do a better job of getting out there with the community. Mm-hmm. 
And I assume, like, seeing, you know, people, when you go out and you do some of the, uh, what's it called, when you do some of the community service and everything like that, seeing some of those guys come back and everything like that and everything, it's it's something in the back of your mind and everything like that where it's like, this is a town that, you know, they'll come out and support or when we come out and support, and that's got to be something that's, like, big for you guys and everything like that where it's like, Hey, okay. not only do we have the school support, but we got the community support as well. Absolutely. And it's been, and just like you guys said, it, it, it's bigger than baseball. You know what I mean? And, and our, our guys went the other day and, and read books, Dr. Seuss books at an elementary school. You know what I mean? And they loved it. You know, it, it, it's little things like that that go, that go a long way and, and, and teach them life habits. And obviously seeing some of the younger generation obviously come around and like making that impact on some of the again, some of the younger generation is, you know, I mean, for you as a coach, it means a lot. And obviously he just seeing that younger generation kind of just, you know, come in and see what the say, Hey, these guys came to my school and everything like that. And just seeing them start to pick up and be like, man, I'd love to go see Coker university baseball. That's gotta be. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also grow the game. I mean, I'm a little biased, but I, I, I think baseball is the, the greatest sport on earth. You know what I mean? And, and, it's kind of dwindling a little bit with that younger age, you know, and, and I, I think it's good just to see them that baseball players in the community that that they can look up to and, 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 and maybe strive to continue to play baseball. Uh, well, I, that's all we got for you today. I appreciate you coming on. And, uh, best yeah. of luck the rest of the season. Yeah, thank you guys, man. It was a pleasure. I really appreciate it. All right. In this week's player spotlight, we have Coker, men's lacrosse, junior midfielder, Zaire Marshall. Z, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. So just to give the uh, listeners a little background on yourself about where you're from, how you, how you got to Coker. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. My senior year, I reached out to Coach O, and we just hit it off, and I loved Coker's small-knit community. So just how did you meet Coach O, being that he's mainly from uh, – Coach O, if you guys didn't know, is the former coach before uh, – it was about two head coaches ago. So we have Coach Ambrose now, and then before that we had Coach Snow, and then Coach O was here for a good bit. Um, he kind of transformed the lacrosse program into what it is today. And then, so that's how Zaire came here. So, um, he's, he recently wanted to go back to Charlotte to some more time with his family. So, so yeah, how did you, uh, you and O meet or how did, how would that relationship go? Uh, I emailed him, he emailed me back and then invited me down for a visit, took me around the campus and we just talked and hit it off. So, uh, just like. Going going to the field aspect of things, your performance this season has been kind of crazy for you. You're not you're not exactly a, what do, what do you call a sharpshooter, but you got yeah. some of the most goals on the team. So just I want to talk about like how from your freshman season to now, how much you've changed as a player and how, how have you seen it through your eyes? Mm, freshman year, I feel like I was taking every chance I got. And now later down the line, I'm letting it come to me. Like, my goals might not come in the first half. They might come in the second half. I might have more assists in the first half. And just letting it come to me and realizing, like, the main goal is to always win. Yeah, you do do a very good job of that, and hyping the team up when you score and all that. Um, so just to touch on, like, your – I mean, whenever you're on the field, you always draw a pole to you. So does that – what does that do? Like, how do you model the game after that as they try to shut you down? How does that open up for your teammates? I trust my teammates. They trust me. Like, I know that they'll work to get me open, just how I work to get them open. I don't. I take the poll as like, it's more of a compliment. Yeah. It's more of a no, compliment to me. And then uh, just so you've really grown as a person here. I've seen it. We've all seen it. And then especially you being named captain this year by Coach Ambrose. How has that taken a toll on your you as a player? Does that give you any confidence or anything like that? Yeah, it feels good to know that the team's behind me and they trust me, and they look at me, look to me as a leader. And then, uh, lastly, just uh, for from my side of things, uh, touch on Coach Ambrose. I know me and you being teammates and all of that. We've seen, seen how how it's been for three years with Coach Snow um, and Coach Ambrose coming in under Coach Snow. So, how have you seen Coach uh, Ambrose grow as a not only a coach but as a man himself? He's a lot more. Mm, when Snow was here, he was always, like, the family guy. The family coach kept everyone together, you know. And when he was named interim head coach, he never he never stepped away from that. 
and I love that about him. He's always there for us. He lets us know that he's always more than a coach. And I never really knew that about him. I always talked to Ambrose at practice, but he was more on the defensive yeah. side. And just being able to gain closer with him and more relationship with him is pretty awesome. Yeah, so I guess as a, as a former athlete myself, I, I know the importance of mentally preparing yourself for competition. Uh, so what is something that you do as an athlete uh, to get ready? Night before, I rest. Rest a lot. Try to go to bed before like 10, 11. And when I'm in the locker room, it's, it's no better feeling than being in there with my teammates getting ready to go to war. Like, that's all I need right there. And then, of course, God. God's number one. Always pray to him before the game. Let him know. All, give him all the glory, no matter what happened. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, with being at Coker for your years, what has been your favorite memory as a lacrosse player so far? Last year when we beat Lander. <laughs> that was sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a fun game. But uh, I'll let you elaborate more on that. Yeah, why don't yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. Last year when we beat Lander, it was a really close game from like start to finish. The year before that, they got the best of us. Now, obviously for you guys and everything like that from – pretty much a whole team aspect and everything like that. Obviously, it's not just you contributing. Obviously, you got about a handful of guys that it seems like every time we do a lacrosse game here that there's an option to score, whether it's yourself, uh, Justin, or, I mean, us for that matter. And again, just a handful of guys who are options and everything like that. For you, what is sort of like the mindset when you guys kind of, you know, hit the offensive grind and everything like that and just know that, anybody on that field has more than a chance to score and has more of the ability to score and everything like that. I feel like it's, it's awesome. Like, you know, like you don't have to do the something right now. You don't have to be the person. You don't have to be the guy and your whole team can lift you up. Like the last game we were passing the ball around, everyone was scoring, everyone was getting assists and that's the best way to play lacrosse. And for you, the, and for everybody and everything like that, it's that unselfish mentality that you kind of see from everybody and everything like that what is it kind of like just having a team that because we've seen a handful of teams where there are guys who will do it themselves and everything like that quote unquote oh but with you guys it's a case of there, there have been handful of plays plays and possessions for you guys where literally everybody will touch the ball multiple times in a quarter and everything like that before you even make a move Ooh, and there's a lot of time on the clock. It's about 80 seconds on a shot clock, for those who don't know. So what is it like kind of just knowing that, you're te- that you have guys who don't have, um, who don't have really that unselfish mentality and everything like that? I think it comes down to, like, we all trust each other. We all trust each other's abilities, and there's a reason why we're all out there together. And we trust what Ambrose has set in stone and every day in practice and what he's telling us and when we just believe in everything Ambrose said, and we trust him. Absolutely. And the other thing I kind of wanted to ask and everything, obviously when we talk about oh the conference and everything as a whole, obviously SAC probably one of the toughest conferences to play in and everything like that. And from a player's standpoint and everything like that, and again, we normally see, I want to say like what, about four, maybe five teams nationally ranked and everything like that. What is it like kind of just like seeing – you know, knowing that you guys probably are in one of the toughest conferences in uh, the SAC, pretty much for NCAA. Uh, I mean, it, it's definitely a tough conference. There's definitely some tough teams, some tough players, and I feel like the more like we embrace it and just are open to it, the better it is. Because I, I mean, they're not going anywhere. I mean, those big teams that are nationally ranked, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. So the more like. You go out there and don't think about it, and you're just out there playing and realize, oh, we can do this too. We just gotta, we gotta do this better. Or we can't make mistakes on little things. Yeah. So, uh, so moving uh, back a little bit, um, started off the season a little rough. Was, was was one and four, and then have won four games in a row now, um, which is phenomenal. Really on a roll. So. What was the conversation like um, in the locker room or in in, in, in a meetings or whatever at that one and four point? And what kind of sparked the the run for you guys? I feel like a lot of the upperclassmen knew like there's a couple games like we have to win if we want to make the playoffs. And starting with after Young Harris, it was LMU. If I'm yeah, it yeah. was LMU. It was LMU, and we were like, 
Coach Ambrose tells us this is the biggest game of our life. I mean, they're the reason we didn't make the playoffs last year. So we came into it like this is the biggest game of our life. If we want to make the playoffs, we got to win this game. And then Catawba mm-hmm. came. We're like, we got to win this one too. And it just keeps on rolling. Yeah, Ambrose does a really good job about mo- mo- motivating the troops mainly. Uh, I mean, he, like Z said, like this week, past week, he's like, this is next game's best uh, best day or game in your life. You got to win it. Like, if we don't win it, this is all for nothing. So you just got to put your head down and grind. He I mean, he said it all week. But, yeah, well, I think that's all we got for you, Zaire. I appreciate you coming on, and uh, I'll see you, see you at practice later. See you at practice. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, of yeah, course, no of course. In another edition of the Coach's Corner segment this week, we have a special guest, Coach Austin Ambrose, head coach of Coker Men's Lacrosse. Coach, pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. So just give the listeners a little insight on to, uh, about a little who you are and how you got here to Coker. Uh, so I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Played high school across at Woodstock High School. Went on to play college at Reinhardt University. Um, loved my experience there. Got to win a couple national championships. Um, it was a good time. Yeah, so I, I guess, um, you know, being promoted to the, the head coaching role kind of all of a sudden, um, not really having um, anybody else officially on the coaching staff – how do you deal with such a large group as the only real person on that head coach? Um, so basically, you know, I was definitely pretty worried about it at first, especially since I was about to have my first child, uh, not even a month into season. So I was I was very worried about it, but had the guys vote for captains, had six captains, and they've they've stepped up, you know, like where. You know, sometimes I'm all running off three hours of sleep. Uh, Samson's keeping me up, but, you know, I bring them in. I'm like, hey, guys, I'm going to have to lean on you guys a little bit today. And um, they've they've come up to the task, and um, best group of captains we've had. I'm very, very proud of them. And the one thing to kind of bounce off of that and everything like that, and this is something I've been able to see both on the sidelines and up in the booth and everything like that, it's one of those things at – where even the guys who aren't captains step up and make that extra role and everything like that and kind of make that difference for you and everything like that. So what is it like kind of having, you know, those guys as well kind of be that extra that that extra support and just know, like, it's the whole team who's helping out each other, not just the captains? Absolutely. You know, I might be a little biased, but I think I have the best guys in the world, you know, um, even the guys that don't play, you know, they're sometimes they're more into it than the guys that do play. They're, uh, yeah. <laughs> we have some great guys, some great freshmen that, you know, are just kind of waiting for their time to step up. And, uh, you know, like when I'm selling Coker to recruits, like I'm like, hey, like as much as I can try to sell myself, what really um, brings a kid here is the, the quality of kids we have. Uh, you know, about two weeks before my son was born, they were like, Hey, coach, come into the locker room. I was like, okay. They bring me in there. They have onesies. They have distilled water. They have bottles. They have, you know, and it's just not many 18 to 22 year olds think like that. You know, like I've honestly, I've never been a part of a group like this. So I'm very thankful every day for them. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure as, as a coach under that pressure, I mean, the added pressure of having your first child has got to be something. I mean, obviously a very special thing, yeah. but but the, the the pressure with with handling now a, a Division two lacrosse team in a in one of the toughest conferences in the country, um, uh, dealing dealing with that and and juggling those things to have a group of guys that is willing to do something like that for you shows how how tight knit that group is, and I'm sure that that helps know leaps and bounds and so kind of playing off that um the the tight knit of the program obviously we've, we've won those the, the four games in a row leading leading up to um the the games this week um but before that it, it started a little bit rocky one and four so what was the conversation like in the locker room and and what do you tell those guys when you're going through a rough stretch like that to kind of empower them to to get back motivated yeah, we did go one and four. Um, luckily for us, it wasn't conference yet. You know, um, my guys were trying to learn a new offense. They were, and, you know, it was put in within, you know, 
four weeks they were already yeah. running it you know so it was uh it was pretty quick to try to do that mm-hmm. um but you know they handled it well and you know like i said the quality of guys like a lot of guys could have uh turned on each other um where my guys kind of just leaned in on each other where i think that that's where what's put us in a situation to win some of these close games that we've had i mean i can see it i mean myself just seeing like the guys that have stepped up this year, it's like if it wasn't for all this adversity that we've been faced with, like I don't I would have never thought they would do that. Like I mean, especially Zaire, he's made crazy strides this year. Not like he's always been a stud on the field, but just like you can just see a new person in him this year. Like he's gets the guys fired up in the huddle. Like he pulls guys aside, like, hey, good play. I mean, coming from like one of the best midfielders in the conference at that, it just really like, you guys have an off game where he's dropping some passes. Like, it's one thing to get on a guy, but then to lift him up, especially with you having that respect from the team, is really huge. Yeah, definitely. And and I think that helps when it when those guys know that the tough moments, they're coming from a place of love. So they're able to handle those tough moments because they know that the minute that they do something right, that that team is going to be right there and praising them and lifting them up. So they're willing to go through those those tough moments that the conversations that need to be had like hey i did this wrong i have to own up to that they're willing to do that because you know their teammates are gonna or help them in the low moments and they're gonna lift them up really high in those high moments that's so important from a college athlete perspective yeah and just one thing that i want to add uh kind of forgot it earlier that coach jeff faulkner has helped us out yeah. tremendously um he's our women's lacrosse coach and you know, I asked him if he could step into this assistant coach role for us, and he did. And, you know, the guys love him. They bought into him. He has a wealth of defensive knowledge, so it's kind of allowed me to hone in on the offense a little bit more and, and feel comfortable that the defense is still going to be taken care of. So, you know, huge shout-out to him. He's He's gone over and above what he needs to do to help Coker as an institution and, you know, help this lacrosse team. I was going to ask about Coach Jeff, actually. Hey, what is it? And kind of like the workload and everything like that that he's kind of helped take off and everything like that. But I assume just being able to split that workload with somebody and have that extra person sort of that, I don't want to say sidekick because it's one of those things where, I mean, when I look on the field and everything like that, I mean, same mindset coming from two great lacrosse minds and everything like that. And I got to assume having just like that extra person who, you know, is also there and helping and knows the game as well as Coach Jeff does is to go ahead and help you has got to be a huge momentum booster for you guys. Yeah, I mean, it's it's allowed me to, you know, like I said, focus in on the offense. We split, you know, for about 35 minutes where offense on one side of the field, defense on the other. He's allowed me to hone in on that. Um you know, he's taken, he watches film, he watches film with the guys. He, you know, has allowed me to be with my son more. He's, like, honestly couldn't be more thankful. And obviously with that uh, and having Coach Jeff and everything like that as well, well, again, having him watch film and talking about the defensive aspect, obviously would have been remiss if I didn't mention the two guys who won and two in the nation – and Connolly and uh, Shepard, both of them one and two Jensen. in the nation. Jensen. Or Jensen. Jensen, excuse me. He, both of them one and two in the nation in cost turnovers. It, it's got to be a huge momentum boost knowing that when teams got to come to Coker and everything like that, or when they face Coker, they got arguably the two. Actually, not arguably. It's proven in the stats. No, the two, yeah, the two best. Yeah. The two best you defenders. Right. <laughs> the two best. <laughs> that yeah. they got to face the two best defenders in NCAA. Yeah, they've been killing it this year. Um, you know, they're young, and it's honestly crazy what they're doing. Uh, you know, with that being said, I think, you know, they're still working on their game too. So, you know, far from a finished product, I think that um, they're definitely some of our hardest working guys. And, you know, two of our more humble guys, you wouldn't, if you knew, if you talked to them, you know, I think the last thing that they would tell you about is that, you know, they're leading the country and cause turnovers, you know, like they, 
that's far from their mind that it's, it's about the win at the end of the day. And, um, you know, and just being a good teammate and it does help too. It does help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, I mean, those two guys, they, they bring the heat in practice too, like just creating energy and competition of anything. I mean, Right, I mean, he's always going against his attacker. I mean, you've seen, we've all seen it. Like, oh, yeah. it gets, <laughs> it gets intense. But I mean, it's only he's only making the attack better. He's making the defense better, and it's it's just. I mean, they're so young too. It's just they have worlds ahead of them. So uh, we we've talked a lot about the the on the field stuff. So I can I would like to to transition, maybe go a little bit off the field with, um, it, you know, obviously being a college athlete. You know the the on field stuff is is one thing, but you know we are student athletes. So how do you, uh, as a head coach, manage not just the on the field stuff, but making sure everybody's good in the classroom, making sure everybody's um, improving as a, as not just a, a player, but a, but a man, I guess as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, yeah, one thing that's huge about Coker is that it you know the small class sizes, so. Pretty much right away, if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, I'm going to email from a professor. They're mm-hmm. setting up meetings. Um, no one's getting left behind. You know, obviously we have study hall and stuff like that. And um, we have some of our captains that work in the writer's studio. And, um, you know, it's it's a work in progress, though. You know, it's, yeah. it's um, we're trying to get that GPA up. And it's uh, I think it's better than it's been. So, mm-hmm. And one of the other things that we talk about in terms of off-field experience is obviously Coker as a whole um, was able to go ahead and lead everybody in community service and everything like that. For you guys, what has been sort of, sort of one of the better experience or one of the best experiences or one of the most memorable experiences you guys have had in terms of the community service aspect? Yeah, so uh, our team, they bring food to the food pantry from the Coker dining hall. So, you know, just being able to help the community, I think, is huge for them. And it, uh, you know, it's humbling too. like, you know, it puts you outside of yourself. And, um, you know, like I said, we have some of some of the best guys. So they're they're happy to do it. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's nothing that we have to force on anybody. It's something that, you know, they they take up pretty quick. And have an athlete who are willing to just go ahead and make an impact with not only just the community, but uh, just in a sense, making impacts on, you know, younger generation, that's got to be huge for a head coach and everything like that, because they're bringing in, again, they're bringing in not just college athletes or not just uh, some of the college community to come watch, but they're also bringing in, you know, the community of Hartsville and everything like that and bringing it closer. Yeah, absolutely. And we have uh, Trinity collegiate prep, just got a lacrosse team down in Darlington. So one of the first high schools to get lacrosse around us. I've been talking to their coach a little bit about trying to get something together where we're able to help them. I I think that, you know, growing lacrosse in the area is, or just growing the lacrosse nationally is something that all lacrosse players take, you know, on their shoulders. They're, everybody's trying to grow the game. Um, you know, whether it's the D1 level or, you know, all the way down to elementary school, you know, that I think lacrosse players just they love the sport and they'll do whatever they can to make it to where it needs to be. So obviously for you guys, eyes and we, we talk about the home field advantage and everything like that. I think for Coker and everything like that, that speaks volumes and everything like that. Four and one at home and two home games left and everything like that at for you guys, I assume just having that home field advantage and again making Coker or one of the toughest places to play at, that's gotta be huge for you guys, especially coming down the stretch with two home games left and about five in general. Yeah, I mean I think that that kind of comes from the support that we get from the school. Uh we don't we're not a football school. Um so we are one of you know, outdoor, we're the only contact sport. You know, everybody wants to see somebody hit somebody. So yeah, at, the, <laughs> at the end of the day, I think that, you know, just the contact of the sport, you know, how intense it is. I think that that's what brings people out to our games. And really, I've been at some schools where some sports teams don't get along 
and mm-hmm. support each other and all that, but uh, not here. Like, it's weird. Even baseball and lacrosse get along. That's not that's not something that's no, normal. No. no. At, uh, it's actually, actually, yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy. I, I like yeah. in high school, like we did not like each other, but here it's like everybody. Yeah, like, and and, and the in, interaction that I saw is when you guys uh, came through and beat LMU in that close game at home. Um, you know, all the lacrosse guys were getting hype and get and getting loud while baseball was warming up for their game. And I, I, they all ran over to the fence on the side. It's like it's y'all's turn. Like it's y'all's turn now. Like go take care of business. And it, it just shows the the community and the, the aspect. Like like you said, you, you don't see that very often. And, you don't. And 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 having that here is so special. And my, myself, I I came from an even smaller campus than this. We had five hundred people on campus. Like it was super super small, small NAIA. And so I was worried about that. Um, going like leaving some place that I had known for four or five years and, and coming here uh, to do my GA stuff. And this is, it, it's been a very pleasant surprise that it's very similar uh, to that aspect. Everybody's close knit. Everybody cares about each other. The whole campus supports each other. You see people from, I mean, different departments come to athletic events all of the time. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the communication, the, the, um, intertwinedness and all that like it's so so prevalent here and i've seen that i i i moved here two and a half months ago and i'm yeah. and, and you, you quickly pick up on stuff like that so i i guess that's that's a great thing to hear for you know like a lacrosse athlete or something you're trying to recruit yeah. you know it, it's so prevalent that people are willing to go out of their way and talk about it all of the time and they just can't shut up about how um great the atmosphere here is which is so important to those kids yeah. uh, especially kids that are coming from a long distance away yeah. you know um zaire i think he said he's from minnesota yeah. right you <laughs> yeah. know you know and, so and they, you, yeah, yeah so he's from california yeah uh, okay it, 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 exactly you know further proving my point and we we had um an acro athlete caitlin francavilla on mm-hmm. or francavilla sorry on a, a while ago um and she's from colorado and so yeah. you you see people coming from all over the place and i mean we have a lot of international students and athletes and stuff like that here to be able to create a family so far away from home and being so far away you know sometimes that's tough and i know that's tough for me being 700 600 700 miles away from home when you have a family aspect like that it just you know it it makes it the world of ease to be able to have that transition. That's ultimately, I mean, that's ultimately what brought me here too. I I was at uh, Queens university before playing lacrosse and then it wasn't the best fit for me. So then I started browsing schools and then I found Coker because one of uh, our goalie, Ethan Hofer from like the same hometown. So, I mean, he's like, Oh, why don't you come check it out here? And so, I mean, I knew a couple of people here and I got here and it's just instantly like everyone's like so welcoming, like with open arms. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. I mean, they're like, they did like, what can we do to help you come here? Like, what can we do? Like, yeah, how can we ease your transition? Yeah, I mean, it was like, it was a world of a difference from like visiting other schools. And I mean, it's just, they like, we, I mean, we as a team, we preach family and that's no, like, I mean, we, we mean, we mean that mm-hmm. by, I mean, every letter in that word. That runs all the way through the yeah. school. I mean, yeah. I've, I mean, I've seen him. I mean, I've seen it myself. I mean, this team is all the stuff I've been through in the past year. This team's just really had my back through it all, and it's really amazing to see. I mean, Coach Ambrose surprised me with uh, shirts last week. Yeah, that, and, and <laughs> that, that, was, that was something else yeah. that I was going to bring up as well, was that the speaking of, of how uh, tight-knit and, and the community and stuff like that, like everybody wore Hable Strong shirts, and, and, you know, they had them on sale and stuff like that. And seeing that as, as a team, everybody warm and warm-ups and uh, how everybody's kind of rallied around you as well has been so awesome to see. So, yeah, I mean, Will means the world to us at the end of the day. We love him, you know, and it's just nice. You know, he he's the type of kid that will do anything, you know, for our team. As soon as this happened, you know, he was jumping in with the video camera and trying yeah, to yeah. he's doing anything he can to help yeah, the team. Yeah. And, you know, like I think that, um, you know, that's been a big success these past couple games as they see, you know, how hard you fight, you know, and it makes makes us want to fight back, you know, and makes make you proud of us, and yeah. you know, um, 
I don't want to sit over here and yeah, yeah. get emotional yeah. or anything, but, you know. Yeah. Um, but, you yeah. know, I mean, y'all have made it. I mean, the world's a little difference for me. I mean, me actually wanting, I mean, me going through this, it's like, you want to be at home with your family, but, I mean, I got two families, so it's yeah. like, when That's I'm at so home, special. I was like, I want, to get, I want to get back to school and see my boys. It's like, mm-hmm. they lift me up, and, I mean, it's never a dull moment with these guys. So, such amazing guys here. Well, you do the same for us, well. <laughs> Appreciate <Absolutely>. that, Coach. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, on that note, uh, we got a game this weekend. Big game. Yeah, so, biggest game of the year. I mean, like like past. I mean, we, we preached that earlier with yeah. uh, if we were going over everything. And Zaire mentioned it too. It's like every you mentioned in practice. The next game is your biggest game of your life. These past next couple of weeks are just a grind. You got to put your head down. But yeah, big game. Anderson at home, always playing close. Uh, got the best of us the past two years. So I know I know the. Time to get the best of them. It's time, yeah, yeah. And the boys want it, but yeah, yeah. we want it. Yeah, we want it bad. But. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, I hope that that'll that'll show on the field, and I yeah. think it will. That the, when you want something, it, the the whole mentality of a team is completely different from just any other game. So that's awesome to see. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where I mean, I haven't gotten a chance to say it this year. Actually, I've said it a couple of times, but I mean, for Saturday the. Expression really does mean, I mean, it's a battle of the Titans this weekend and between Coker and Anderson, and it's one of those things where you could easily see. It, this could be, I mean, the way the conference is and the way how tough everything is, this could be a matchup that, you know, it's March 23rd right now. This could be a matchup that we see April 23rd in the playoffs. So huge indications and huge playoff all pushes for uh, both teams for that matter. Yeah. Extremely important. Yeah, I'm excited. We're gonna lock in this week. Yeah. Ready to go. I'm already. I mean, it's, it's Monday. I, yeah, Monday. I'm already fired up for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm. I, I get the privilege to actually call that game on the uh, live stream. So I mean, I was fired up. I did the last game against Catawba, and you can probably did a great job. Yeah, you yeah. Can, you can probably listen to it and te- uh, yeah, until you, I had you, some ties to the team a little bit. Yeah, you, you a, little tell, bias, a little yeah, bias. A little bit, a little bit. But Just I mean, a little. You, you can yeah. tell the difference. I had yeah. to. I got him on. I got on him a little bit at halftime because you know down five. He's sitting up there and he's like just depressed, and, 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 and it was coming through in his in his thing. I was I like, was, Look. I wasn't depressed per se. I was like. I know these. I was just like, I know these boys can play it better, yeah. and we're just gotta I, get out the slump. I had to remind him that no matter what happens in the game, that, that he has to bring some energy to the broadcast. But uh, um, oh, he I, brought it. I, I, yeah, well, he brought the, it. The, the, second, <laughs> the, the second half, he definitely brought it. I mean, it, it showed like he fed off of the energy that was down on the field, and and the the, the comeback there was crazy. So yeah, that was awesome yeah. to be able to see. So. Yeah, I mean, I'll be, I'll be back on. Hopefully, I don't get kicked off the mic this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm looking forward to that. But and, uh, Diego Martinez will be up with me this there this week. Uh, no, oh, he, he's going to be commentating. Yeah, I got to. I got to. Okay, work on yeah, yeah. As long as we have a mute button, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might have to give him a little uh, little rundown before that. But it should be fun having two two little uh, lacrosse minds up there. It'll be fun, but yeah, absolutely. For sure. Well, on that note, I think we're going to wrap this one up. I appreciate you coming on, Coach. Well, I appreciate you guys, and I appreciate all the work you do for Coker. Of course. It's, Absolutely. Uh, some you. of the best in the biz right here. <laughs> hey, appreciate hey, that. Hey, hey, you. Like you said, you know, it, it's easier when, when the community is strong, and, you know, we love what we do, and, and we, we feel the support of everybody else. It's, it, goes, it goes both ways, so we appreciate that for sure. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Coach. Thank you for coming. See you practice. See you (laughs) practice. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of the Cobra Corner. We hope you enjoyed the show and can't wait to see you supporting Coker Athletics in the stands or online. Remember, your passion and support really does make a difference for our team. So keep cheering, be loud, and let's go, Cobras. See you guys next week.